In terms of cognitive neuroscience, Kentab has been very useful, I think, because the animal perspective has focused us onto brain systems, neural systems, which control different aspects of cognition. And of course, one of the ways that you, you test this in humans is to combine testing with brain imaging. And quite a few of the Kentab tests have by now been used in functional imaging studies. The Tower of London, I think, was one of the first to be imaged. And more recently, the Paired Associates Learning Test has been imaged. Various versions of the intradimensional, extradimensional set shifting task have been imaged. So, this, you know, this has been very useful. It helps to confirm our theories that these tests are sensitive to disorders in different brain regions. And of course, we have converging evidence actually from the study of patients with defined lesions, for example, in the frontal lobes or the temporal lobes. We spent quite a lot of the 1990s uh, doing that, actually. And one of our later tests, the Cambridge Gamble task, we introduced in the late 90s, also as an imaging task, uh, and assessed not only patients with lesions, but also the effects of drug addiction, for example, which was very innovative at that time. Additionally, we've validated these tests in other ways by showing that they're sensitive to drug effects. So, for example, um, scopolamine is an anticholinergic drug which impairs memory. And we showed in a study in collaboration actually with GSK in the 90s that scopolamine at quite low doses really severely impairs recognition memory on the delayed matching to sample task. We're able to show that Ritalin actually improved performance in spatial working memory, um, a kind of human optimal foraging test which we gave to Cambridge undergraduates and found that Ritalin even improved their functions. But there are other examples. Um, HIV patients have early cognitive deficits and one of our tests was able to pick that up. Similarly, gene positive patients with Huntington's disease in the pre-manifest stage before clinical syndrome occurs, also have some cognitive deficits, for example, in the set shifting task. So again, this is very useful um, for potentially developing medications and other therapeutic measures. So I think CANTAB has delivered, um, both as a valid test of different brain systems in cognition, cognition being very complicated. It's shown sensitivity to drug effects both positive and, and negative, and it's also shown sensitivity to different types of neuropsychiatric disorder, sometimes from the earlier stages. And it's also enabled us to differentiate them effectively as well, for example, into frontal lobe executive type problems and more posterior cortical or hippocampal style memory deficits.